Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So today I'll be discussing the modernized case grids in Dynamics 365 customer service. And as the name already kind of explains, this is a way to visualize the case data a little bit different than we were used to before. So this feature is actually part of 2022 release wave two, and it went GA last month in December of 2022. Let's get right into it right after this. I'm gonna start by showing you what this new modernized case grid looks like. So you can see here that I have my all cases view open and you can also see that it immediately looks different, right? We can see that we now show these icons below the priority column and also in the origin column as well. And you can also see some changes to the status uh, column here as well, right? The different colors, uh, etc. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the system actually also now has an enhanced active cases view, and that includes all of the columns that are going to look or could look slightly different. And uh, you can also see some new columns. So you can see here we have some SLA information in here as well. Now, these are all, as you can see, non compliant, but if they are currently counting down, that's exactly what you will see here, the live countdown to that SLA. The other thing you see here is the last interaction, right? So I don't really have a lot. Yeah, you can see here we had an inbound email that was sent. So I think that's really, really nice for us to be able to kind of see that, right? What is that last interaction that we had on that case? The other thing here is the escalated, whether or not this case has been escalated. And then lastly, we can also see the case age. And, and this is just a calculated field in the application. Now, these different colors are really the colors that are associated with the drop down, or I should say option set, right, uh, inside of this particular column, right? So you can show all the different colors that you have set up for all of those values. And you can see here that that shows actually really, really nicely. You can also see that we now get an image of whoever owns that case. And if I scroll back here to the side, um, you can see right priorities, like I said earlier. Now, the thing to note is when you try to update, because this is actually also an editable grid, and I started to click in here, like let's say I wanna change this from normal to something else. If I just do a single click, I can't really do anything, right? It doesn't allow me to edit that. So that's something you need to keep in mind. You have to double click on that and then this is gonna allow you to select a different value. So let's just say that this is a high priority and you can see here that that priority has now been set to high. There's no save button or anything like that uh, that I have to do, I can just, change that value and that's all I have to do here. All right, so now let's talk about how are we going to enable this. So I'm gonna go to make.powerapps.com and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open the solution. In my case, I'm gonna open the default solution and let's just go ahead and search for the default solution. Here we go. And then, unfortunately, what I'm gonna have to do here in a second, once this actually loads, I'm just gonna give it a second. I'm, I'm gonna unfortunately have to configure this or turn this on in the classic version. So I'm gonna switch to classic here. And here it comes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to expand the entities here and then I'm going to scroll down to cases. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to click on case. And again, I'm going to wait until that information loads. And here we are. So then we're going to click on controls and you can see that 
I've already enabled that. So what you want to do is add that Power Apps grid control. So you can do that by clicking Add Control, and then you're going to look for Power Apps grid control, and you're going to click Add. And once you do that, you'll notice below here all of those Power App grid control, control options. So enable editing. Do you want folks to use this grid or this view to make changes to records, right? You saw me do that earlier. So you can just click here on this edit icon and set this to yes or no, if you don't want people to do that. Then we have enable filtering, right? Enabling or disabling filtering in the grid, allowing a range selection. You can see here it says it determines whether users can select a subset of the grid to copy to the clipboard. Do we want to enable the jump bar? Those are, that's really showing us those letters on the bottom. Let me just go ahead and see if I can pull up accounts. Oops. To kind of show you what exactly I'm talking about and what that jump bar is. We used to have that, right? This is the jump bar. So if you want to enable that, uh, you can do that as well. And enable, you can see that here as well. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um, if you want, if you're actually turning this on, this is going to disable the infinite scrolling uh, that we have. And then do you want to show the status column in, right, in the, when you're using this particular grid? Do you want to enable those option set colors? So that was what I was talking about earlier, right? And then we have showing the data type icons. So you saw that earlier as well. The navigation types that are allowed in the grid, right? You can also, if you click on edit, you can kind of see here, um, primary only or all. That's really, that has to do with the lookup fields on the, on the grid, right? So do you, are you going to allow people to click on those lookups to open that record? And then the reflow behavior, right? We can configure that as well. Do we want to only <clears throat> do grid only, list only, or do we just want the system to decide that based on the uh, screen size? And then lastly, here in customizer control, I'm not sure exactly what this does because it doesn't really tell you anything. But what you want to do here is you want to enter this information in there. Let me see if I can actually make this a little bit larger. So this is that mscrmcontrols.customcellcontrol.customcellcontrol <clears throat> single line of text. And if I actually right, go in there, you can kind of see here, that's exactly what it says in here. And if you go back to the website, the article actually has this in there as well. So you can just copy and paste that in there. And that is really all that you have to do. Now you do want to make sure obviously that you're going to save and publish, right? Sometimes people forget. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And then of course, if you have other views where you want to add some of those new fields to it, right? You saw earlier, let me actually go back here to that control here or to the view, I should say. You also saw here we have next SLA and last interaction. So if you want to add those, obviously you would need to go back to those views and then you can add them there. Now, just to clarify, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you. Let's just go ahead. If I can find it, status, status reason. Right. So what you see in here are all the different statuses, right? So I have here new with the color blue. I have here in progress with the color green. So this is really where those colors are coming from. If I go back here to this status reason screen, right? So in progress, new, that's how you can configure that. Now, on top of that, you might want to be able to add custom items, uh, I should say not items, sorry, custom uh, icons here in the priority table or in the, or I should say the priority field or in the origin field. The way that this works is that you would actually do that by adding a web resource. 
So let me show you how we can do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a value to this origin column. So I'm just going to go back here to Power Apps and oh, let me just go back to the default solution here. And then obviously we want to go to cases. We're going to go to the columns. We're going to look for origin. And I'm going to add a choice here. So I'm going to say Instagram is the next one. And then of course you can also assign a value here, but that has nothing to do with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And here we go. And now I'm actually going back here. Oh, this is not what I wanted to do. Let's just go back here to the default solution. And now let's go ahead and add, uh, let's see here, that web resource. So I'm going to start by uploading the actual image of the icon, and that is Instagram. The display name, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to call this Instagram icon. But the next thing is actually really important, right? The value in that name field. So it needs to be entered like this. Um, so you're going to get, you're going to start with incident and then origin. You can see that over here, incident slash origin and then, oops, Instagram origin icon. So the reason I'm using this word Instagram, because that's really right my drop down value that I added earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And then obviously you need to publish this as well. And obviously you can do that by clicking here, publish all customizations, which I've already done. So I'm going to go back here to my customer service workspace. And obviously to, in order to see this change, you would need to refresh your screen as well, which I've already done. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here on the origin. And then you can see that Instagram now is an option. I did not assign a color to that. And that's why it's looking uh, white in the background like this. So if I click now on Instagram, look at that. I now have my custom icon for the origin. And for priority, it works the same way or the similar way, I should say. So let me go back here to Power Apps one more time to kind of show you, right? This is that new web resource that I created. And what I'm really talking about is, is this name field, right? You can see here, we have to do incident slash origin slash then the name, right? Of that drop down and then origin icon. So we're going to do the same thing. If we wanted to change priority, we're going to have, uh, instead of origin here, we're going to have priority. And then we're going to get the option set value. So let's say the option set value is urgent. Then you're going to type here urgent. And then it's going to say priority icon, not origin icon, right? Because that's the name of that column priority. So uh, again, one more time, incident slash priority slash the actual label of that drop down option, right? And then priority icon. And that's how you do that. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.